Hi folks, and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Does anybody recognise my new match fishing seat box? No? Well, not really surprising. It's, uh, it's one of the uh, lesser known manufacturers, otherwise known as me. I designed it and built it uh, over the last couple of weeks in my garage, and obviously it's very similar to lots of other um, boxes which are on the market at the moment. But the beauty of it was that I've been able to customise everything in there purely and simply for me. Now in the next couple of weeks I'll be putting up a couple of videos to show you exactly how I made it. So if you want to make one yourselves you'll have all the, the knowledge that you need to based on those videos. Um, just to give you a bit of background, I've been building boxes, obviously more primitive than these ones, um, for the last probably 30 years. I think the first one I made with um, extending legs was around about 1980 and obviously they've become more and more sophisticated since then but one of the ones that does excuse me <coughs> one of the ones that does spring to mind um, was one um, which I made and I was sitting fishing at Drayton Reservoir in Daventry not a match and uh, I've been sitting there for a while and all of a sudden some bloke from across the pond who was sitting on one of those plastic uh, Shakespeare boxes shouts across and he says Oi! What's that? Is that a Piper Alpha? Now of course, for those of us that are somewhat older, um, if you can remember back to 1988, Piper Alpha was an oil rig. And unfortunately, it was um, subject of a, a disaster which killed a lot of the crew. Uh, it actually blew up in the middle of the sea. Um, but it was actually quite apt because when I thought about it, we had the main platform, we had side platforms for things like helicopter landing pads, or in our case for um, uh, bait trays. Um, we had sticky out things like bars at the front and uh, rod rests at the side, so it did seem that Piper Alpha was quite a, an apt one. And of course since then um, things have really taken off with the major manufacturers now producing all sorts of sophisticated boxes. Uh, unfortunately they can be very heavy and they also cost quite a lot of money. And so my task in building this was to make it as cheaply as I could <clears throat> and of course um, it is uh, less money than um, buying one of these things which could be anything from 300, 600, I don't know, even up to a thousand pounds which in dollars could be uh, $2,000 Australian or I don't know, let's call it $1,500 in the US. Um, a lot of boxes built today um, commercially are probably anything up to 18 kilos. My box is just under 13 kilos which is about 29 pounds and in fact I'm sitting on my old box the one I've been using up to now um, and it served me well but it's been time to update it and in fact this one um, isn't uh, a combined box if I just watch my cable you can see that this one is a separate box with a separate platform and that's fine but it does make it rather heavy all in all um, this weighs about 45 pounds between the box and the platform and that's about uh, 20 kilos. As I say mine weighs just under 13 kilos with the platform attached and so I've saved something like 7 kilos or 15 pounds. So now let's move across to my box and have a look at it in a bit more detail. We'll start off at the bottom with the foot plate and as you can see I've gone with the lift up variety which just stacks in place like that. When it's uh, being taken to the bank, slides between the channels and then locks down with some knobs on either side here. Legs are fully adjustable using the normal knobs and the mud feet are pretty wide um, and I made them this way because I do fish in some fairly muddy places. You'll also notice I've left these nylon lock nuts um, proud at the bottom and the reason for that is that I once sat on a, a shingle bank, a gravel bank, which was pretty sloping and my feet at the time were pretty flat and I was literally sliding down the bank. So gone to this idea and haven't looked back ever since. The outer legs are 25 millimeter uh, diameter. 
So that means any of the accessories that you're out there today on the commercial open market will fit them. And that was one of the things I wanted to achieve just in case anyone does want to uh, copy my design. Personally, I've got some uh, metal left over and I will be building lots of accessories for this um, from that. The frame itself is pretty robust and you've got to remember I weigh well over 200 pounds, so it needs to be. But what I haven't done is to uh, use knobs on the, the frame itself. I've got little grub screws in the back in here, so when I set this thing up to be exactly my height, I'll just lock the grub, grub screws off and that'll be the end of it. Don't need knobs, so therefore I haven't put them on. There is room for a, a deep storage tray in the bottom, but to be honest, I've got so much storage in here, um, don't think I'm ever going to need it. But if necessary, it would be fairly easy to just build a, a cassette storage box to go in there if I wanted to. So now let's have a look at the top box. Uh, nice padded, comfortable lid. Um, you'll notice it's in a light grey compared to the black I normally use. And the reason for that is that there are times when I've got up off my box before in the height of summer, tried to sit down and literally burn my rear end all but. So this will keep nice and cool, certainly better than the, the black vinyl. You'll also notice I haven't put a retaining strap on for a, a pole, a butt strap. The reason being, I a long time ago made this sort of a prototype um, butt strap for the pole, which um, I'd actually made to be adjustable just in case. And what I've done, uh, I use it on my box all the time, you may have seen it, it's actually just bolted onto the front there. And it's turned out to be so good that I'm going to create a, a proper one. And uh, the thing was, I should have, um, over the years, actually turned this into a proper one as well. But frankly, it just worked that well, I couldn't be bothered. But yep, when I actually come to do the accessory for this one, it will still bolt onto the end of the box here, but it will definitely be um, a, a more professional sort of a, a thing. Inside the lid, we've got deep storage and a two-tier shallower storage. The deep storage takes, obviously, things like the weighing scales. This is a cover for a, a GoPro, but I'm using that at the moment, and various other camera equipment and so on. In here, I've got storage for um, swim feeders, in this case, method feeders, and at the bottom, these are just the, the bigger versions, which I don't use quite so often. Obviously, I've got cage feeders in there too. On the other side, I didn't have enough um, stuff to make best use of the, the deep uh, nature of the tray, so I've created this two-tier system. This one, as you can see, is fully extractable, and I may well make another couple of these so I can have different things in it. At the moment, I've just put a few winders and this silicon tube in, just to give you some idea of the, the depth of the thing. But down below it, I've got storage for larger floats, and in this case some river floats, various other bits and pieces in the front, stuff that I don't use all that often. We're going to get to the drawers next, but before I show you the drawers, you'll notice these locking pins. Now, I've been using these pins for probably, ooh, 1988, so at least 30 years, and these are what lock the drawers in position. The beauty of them is, they're low-tech, I've never had one break on me, never had to replace it, and everything has always stayed inside the box rather than on the floor. I've got four drawers in the unit. Uh, I used to have six in the old box, but by a bit of clever design work and uh, doing what I showed you inside the lid, I've managed to reduce that by two drawers. So that's also saved some weight. Top drawer is 40 millimeters, so a little bit deeper than the lower ones, which are only 30 millimeters. But this is designed for stuff that I need to get to all the time in the match. Like if I break off a hook length or need a different hook or, or whatever. You'll notice at the back, we've got these little wings on here. And that means that I can pull it all the way out to expose the very back of the drawer. And it's still locked in place. It's not going to fall out anywhere. On the other side, again, it's a ready kit of uh, the stuff I'm using all the time. Uh, but again, because these are a bit deeper, I've just got some spare bits and pieces like a, a hook tire and some tape and stuff like that in there too. 
lower drawers, storage for um, floats, and I have interchangeable tips because my floats are all homemade. And then on this side, I've got the usual winders tray. If I now lock everything back up, just put the pins in. Close up the locks. As you can see, that is not now ever going to go anywhere. As for the strap, you can see I've created this uh, yoke mechanism here, which I'm sure I've seen on uh, other boxes, but seems like a good idea to me because what's happened today is that instead of my strap fitting on here in the centre of the box, because I've got the foot plate on, the centre of gravity's moved and therefore I need to be able to adjust the, the pivot point or the balance point. And that's taken care of by this little locking clasp here so I can shorten it or lengthen it and get the box to balance up for myself. The strap itself, I bought this at the local DIY store and the reason I like this one so much is because of the arthritis in my thumb. With this one, first of all it's a steel clasp but it's very easy to take on and off. One thing I do like is if I do take the strap off because I'm sitting in the water, rather than getting everything wet, I can just drop that over the leg and it means that I don't end up with a, a wet strap. So that's pretty much it for the, the basic uh, box then folks. Uh, as I said, over the next couple of weeks I'll be uh, putting up a couple of videos uh, showing you exactly how I built the thing, so if you want to build one yourselves feel free to do so. Uh, I should point out that uh, I have no formal training whatsoever as a woodworker or a metal worker and everything I've done is what I've learned over the years. Now I have acquired obviously things like table saws and band saws and so on but you don't necessarily have to have sophisticated kit and you certainly don't need a welder. I, I, can't uh, I couldn't weld to, to save my life. But hopefully if you do want to make one of these things, I, I have made mistakes and uh, obviously they won't show in the video but by watching the video, if you do want to make one for yourself, just make sure that you're happy that everything is robust enough, solid enough and uh, safe for your use. I've been making them for a long time, as I say, so I'm pretty happy for myself, but um, you may see something that I haven't noticed, although I hope not. Um, after that, I'll be building some side trays, which I may well uh, store underneath the, the box. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, I'll be making that pole butt holder. Um, there will be a, a bump bar or a spray bar, whatever you want to call it. There'll be keep net arms and there'll be a rod rest and a, and a back rest for when I'm feeder fishing. Uh, the final thing I'll probably do, again I think I mentioned this on the other box, I'll probably make myself up a trolley with wheels, uh, but if it's, if it's a trolley and it's probably going to be a wheelbarrow trolley, if I make a trolley I might as well make it into a platform as well. So in the event that I have to go into even deeper water, let's say up to three feet deep, by the time I've got the platform in the water, the legs on this one extended, I'll be sitting out of the water. And remember I fish tidal rivers, so sometimes you get um, tides which aren't all that high, and other times you get tides which are a bit higher. And I have been caught out by that in the past, so you never know, I might just end up using it as a, an extended platform too. Anyway. That's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to subscribe, feel free. And if you liked it, don't forget, click the button. And until the next time, bye for now.